instructions. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm John Zenning. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer for uh, Cronus. I have a few slides here just to focus a little more on, uh, yes, here, this way, right from yes. there we go, okay. A few slides here to focus a little more on, uh, on the Asia market. Also, I'm going to give you about a 10 minute video of the Cronus Backup Cloud. Because what I found is we can talk to you about backup and tell you how great we are, but there's nothing like seeing our product in action to understand how easy it actually is to use. So first thing, a little data. Uh, last week, I was at the uh, Microsoft Cloud and Hosting Summit. And every year, they commission work by a company called 451 Research uh, to look at SMB buying behaviors in the cloud. And so what I did is I took that research and pulled out uh, APAC-specific data. Now, this research is public. It's available to everyone. So I put the link uh, in the deck here so you can download it and take a look at it. Uh, because that way you could actually see how you compare to, or your region compares to the, the rest of the world. So the first thing I want to point out here, this, this first question has to do with uh, where are you spending in cloud in Asia? And where do you plan to be uh, splitting your, your cloud spend now and in 2018? And what you can see is <clears throat> there isn't a significant difference over the next two years. But what's really interesting is if I had asked this question five years ago, it would have all been around infrastructure hosting. And what you can see here is that companies are now spreading their spend not around, only around infrastructure, but applications, managed services, and security services. This is showing an increase in sophistication in the spend, IT spend of cloud services. The other data points I pulled out that I found uh, quite interesting was 44% um, of the businesses surveyed, and these are all SMBs, small and medium businesses, and it's statistically significant. They surveyed uh, in the hundreds of uh, businesses in, the, uh, in Asia. Uh, they're using some sort of disaster recovery service, and that includes backup in that category. So already almost half of uh, businesses in Asia are using some form of hosted uh, data protection service. Um, about half again buy their service from a service provider. And it is the most popular managed service. So if you go look at the, the data, you'll see that the number one service that they're buying from, man, uh, from service providers is backup and recovery. So this is a, a high demand service. Uh, this one uh, really surprised me. Uh, and you can tell me whether you expected this or not. 60% of businesses in APAC use a public cloud in their business or to run their business. Uh, what's really impressive is it's almost 10% more than the next region. In some regions, it's 20%. Uh, so that means what does that mean? That means that this region is starting to leapfrog the rest of the world in terms of their cloud usage and their cloud adoption. So you're going to go from being a laggard to actually leapfrogging to being ahead of the rest of the world. And then 69% uh, of businesses have a private on-premise cloud. With 61% of these people actually having some sort of inter interoperability with uh, a uh, public cloud. So you're already starting to do things here that are not happening in the rest of the world, that we work really hard to get people to start understanding the complex ecosystem that is the cloud and uh, on-prem, so private and public cloud, so a true hybrid system. Um, the last one I'll point out here is the top three reasons for increasing spending with a service provider. This is sort of interesting as well. They actually have the top three reasons for decreasing spend, uh, but that one was less interesting because it was things like my business is shrinking and uh, you know there's nothing we can do about that. But all of them 
if you think about it, is increased uh, performance requirements. So they're looking for services that perform better. Increased resource requirements. That means they're growing and they're adding more. And then buying, buying additional services. So increasing their percentage of IT spend on hosted services. So this here again shows the opportunity and um, what businesses are doing in this region. And this survey was really designed to be targeted at service providers to show them how to better serve the uh, small and medium business segment within their region. So once again, this is really, there's I think 45 slides in this deck. It's really worth your time to go look at it and see how this region compares to others and uh, see what's actually happening in the market. It was actually published last week. So this is as fresh data as you can get, which is why I, cho well, I chose this data for two reasons. I'm pretty sure there's no one from 451 here. So I, I don't insult any of the analysts here by uh, using their data instead of one of the other analysts' data. Plus, uh, it's very rare that you actually get data that, that's this fresh. So now let's focus on Acronis within this market. So what you've seen in Asia is the adoption of cloud in the digital world is uh, accelerating. And actually to a point where in some instances you're ahead of the rest of the world. So worldwide, and Sergey talked about this, we've seen massive growth because of our cloud product lines. Triple digit growth year over year. Uh, we added uh, about 250 service providers into production last year. Uh, this year, we're already at 500 and we'll surpass 2,000. Uh, in this region, not including uh, Japan, we expect to be over 200 new service providers uh, by the end of this year. So 10% of the service providers we'll have within our uh, community. And then our product is a leading product in the market. We are in the Gardner Magic Quadrant for Draz as a uh, disruptor, and we're also in the Forrester Wave for DR. Uh, so we do, we're very proud of the products we have, and uh, we're proud of the results that it's driving, which is uh, tremendous growth uh, in the market. Uh, we don't share revenue numbers. That's why it just says revenue here. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to do is show you here in uh, Asia, APAC and MIA, what our growth is looking like to give you a sense of how fast we're growing. So what you're seeing here is three years worth, the last two years and this year projected, of growth of our cloud revenue. So first thing you can notice is that year one doesn't exist. Right? It, it was literally in the thousands of dollars or uh, whatever the local currency is, and essentially 0% of our business. Year two, we started growing in each of these, right? where it became about 5% of our revenue in APAC. So this is all APAC. Uh, and then in year three is where you're seeing uh, the massive growth. Uh, we shouldn't have had a total here because it skews the, the growth. Uh, with the, most of the growth here being in uh, Australia and New Zealand, but what you can see is uh, Korea just started this year and is growing much more rapidly than any of the other ones in year one except for uh, uh, me and some of the bigger countries here. And so we expect to see much more growth. And that's what I have here. Um, so two years ago, uh, Cloud revenue was 0% of our revenue. Last year, in 2015, it was 5% of our total revenue. And remember, our traditional business is still growing. It's not like it's shrinking or flat. It is continuing to grow uh, in, the, in the low double digits. Uh, by 2016, this year, we project and are on track to be over 10% of overall revenue. Uh, we actually grew two and a half times more in 2016, or are growing two and a half times more than we did in 2015. And we project that by um, 2018, which is a short two years from now, our cloud revenue will surpass on-prem our traditional business. Our subscription revenue will surpass it. 
And over time, it'll become the majority of our business, not just about 50% of our business. So we're seeing a trend of massive growth uh, driven by the cloud business in uh, APAC. What is this based on? I know Sergey showed this slide, but I thought it was important enough to show it again because it's all based on the new cloud architecture that we developed. And what you will see is uh, later this year, and actually very soon, over the middle of this year, we will release new versions of our on-premise product uh, that is based also on this new cloud architecture, which means that your, cap your capabilities of any production, any workload, any storage, and any recovery will not only be true to our cloud products, but our on-premise products as well. And so we will have truly a portfolio of products that have the same experience, whether you're using the on-premise version or the cloud version, and both of them will support hybrid scenarios where you have both on-prem and on-cloud workloads, both where you want to store your backup on-premise in a service provider cloud or in a public cloud. And all of our product lines are moving to using this uh, new cloud architecture. The uh, next slide I want to show you, and the, the formatting is a little different because I uh, stole it from a work we did with Microsoft. Um, Microsoft technology is prevalent in the world, of course. It's the number one IT uh, technology used around the world. Uh, a bit more so actually in Asia. So I wanted to take a minute here to highlight the work we're doing uh, with supporting Microsoft technology. Uh, I think one of the best kept secrets as a Cronus is we're actually one of the best companies in the world when it comes to backing up and restoring Microsoft-based technology. Most of our revenue is because we back up and restore Windows PCs, Windows servers, and Windows VMs. What this is showing you is that this user interface here is now also going to include to support Azure workloads, cloud workloads, as well as local workloads, and be able to store on Azure storage as well as local and cloud storage. And we also have two possible interfaces depending on what you want or the customer wants. There's our standard interface, which I'll show you here shortly. Uh, and there's also the Azure and Azure Stack interface that we've uh, used our APIs to integrate into there. Which means that a business that wants to use our technology, our data protection services, they'll be able to do it either in our great experience or in the experience that they might be more comfortable with. And both of them will uh, work. And you'll be hearing a lot more about this in the work we're doing with Microsoft at the Microsoft Worldwide Partner Conference. So one last slide before the demo here, and then I'll talk, after the demo, I'll talk about uh, announcements, is that this cloud architecture is designed to support a really wide variety of workload. So the full Microsoft workload, including mobile devices as well, as well as the Apple workloads, Mac, iPhone, iPad, and then of course, the, uh, the um, uh, Linux servers, Android, other public clouds, and VMware. So th this is the most complete solution in market today. So you've heard two terms I've used so far a lot, easy, complete, right? Those are two of our tenants, easy and complete. Make it very easy for customers to use, buy and use our product, because backup is always important but not urgent. Uh, the most complete, which makes it even an easier decision. The third one, uh, which we won't talk about in too much detail today, is affordable, right? Making sure that you can implement these solutions uh, very, very affordably. At this point, I'm going to defer to a video that will give you a quick overview of how easy it is to actually back up and restore data. Go ahead.
cloud, how many individual machines, and also a seven day backup history so I can see all the red lights and green lights and get a good idea of what's going on with each one of my clientele. For any one of my clients, I can click on the client name on the left hand side and get a little bit more information, uh, specifically what they're using for their utilization, what accounts they have configured, and I do have the ability to click through and manage their backups as well. Before I get to uh, backup and recovery, I want to show a few more highlights of the uh, service provider interface. Besides the companies tab, uh, there's the administrators tab where I can create user accounts for people in my MSP company. On the storage tab, I can see what cloud storage devices I already have configured. I may be inheriting some cloud storage from a Chromis or from a distributor above me. I can also add my own storage, whether I want to use local storage, um, if I have a, a NAS device in my data center, I already have some hardware in my data center I want to utilize, or if I want to use the Chromis storage gateway to point to Amazon or uh, Microsoft Azure, I can do that using the, the Chromis storage gateway component, which is if we click on Add Storage, download the ISO, follow these simple instructions, and that storage is now available for me to uh, use for each of my clients. And then lastly, on this tab, there is the branding section. And the branding is where we allow you to make this interface your very own. You can use your colors, your URLs. Um, the nice thing about this is your clients always have to reach you. They log in to the console using the URLs. If they want to buy more capacity, they come to you. If they need to call your support, they're going to come to you. This really does allow you to make this a Chromis Backup Cloud your own solution and sell it off to your clients. Onboarding a client with our interface is extremely simple. There's an add button at the bottom of the list. When I click on add, that pops open a menu where I can set up the name, decide whether or not they're going to start off a trial or production, get the language set for the uh, email notifications. And I can also pick the cloud storage device that this client or this particular client is going to use. And you can see these are the same storage devices we configured earlier. I can assign quotas, and quotas can be hard coders and soft coders if you like any overages, and there's also some contact information down at the bottom. Now, I will go ahead and cancel this. I don't need to uh, create another client just now, but I wanted to show you how easy that is. I'll also point out that if you are using any cloud automation tools today, we do offer integration uh, with voting automation tools like WHMCS, so you can do the provisioning, the account management, even the billing through your existing cloud software, or you can use the Acronis interface that I'm showing you today. So as you can see on this management console, I do get a good overview of my clients. I do have a lot of options available to me for my storage configuration, my private cloud, and also my branding options. Now, of course, I also have the ability of assisting my customers with their disaster recovery plans, with their backup plans. I can simply select any one of my clients, click on Manage Backups, and this will bring me, as the MSP, into a management console or into a backup console for this particular client. Inside the backup 
I see all of my recovery points. If I'm using local storage and I'm connected to a virtual labs environment, I can recover not only uh, files and folders and full machines, but I can even run a backup as a virtual machine. This is true if it came from a virtual machine or a physical machine to begin with. Any one of the backups, regardless of what system it came from, can be applied to run as a virtual machine. It's all part of the Acronis Any Data Engine allows us to protect anything, anywhere. A few other things to point out. On the left-hand side, we do have uh, call-ups from Microsoft SQL Server. I have a SQL Server in my demo environment. We also support Microsoft Exchange, Active Directory, SharePoint. And as I deploy those applications <coughs> in my environment, I'll see those in the menu here. Also on the left-hand side, I have the ability to browse all the backups that are available for this particular client. I can browse the cloud storage, I can browse their local storage via the agent, and if I select any one of these backups, I can go in and drill down, see the different recovery points, see my recovery options uh, for any one of the backups. So we give you a lot of flexibility in how we want to protect the customer's data. We'll give you an activities overview, we'll give you alerts if there is anything wrong, and we'll give you the ability to update the agents remotely. So as we release new versions of the cloud product, as we're releasing new versions of the agent, uh, very simple for you to come to the console and update individual clients or update all the clients at once. We'll even support you automatic updates with these agents if you wish to have that level of, uh, of automation. Now, one last thing I want to show you. Um, I did mention that we have the ability to do the branding. I did mention that your clients, if you choose to give them the credentials, can't log in and self-manage. In my other browser, I have uh, logged in as Client2. And as Client2, I'm seeing my managed service provider branding. I'm seeing the colors, the logos, uh, if I want to contact information, I can actually get uh, my managed service provider's contact information. So I know that my clients are always going to call me for help. They're going to come to me to order more capacity. Other than that, everything is exactly the same. Uh, the interface by default looks a little different with the, uh, the, the bigger icons, but I can simply come to the table view, and this looks a lot more like what I saw on the MSP side. Um, but it really is the same machines, it really is the same interface, it really is a true multi tenant multi-tier uh, web-based application. As far as the backup technology, it's the same backup technology that the Chromebooks have been building for the past 10 to 12 years. So a lot of powerful features under the hood that I haven't shown you today. Really, I wanted to focus primarily on this interface, focus primarily on how you, the MSP, can easily come on board, get involved in the Acronis Backup Cloud, and easily start making money selling this to new and existing clients. So those are just some of the highlights of the Acronis Backup Cloud. There are certainly a ton of features that I didn't go into at all. There's many more powerful options that we'd be happy to show you in a more personalized demo. So simply reach out and we'll be happy to set up a more personalized, more in-depth demonstration of your company so you can learn just how easy it is. And uh, thank you all for joining us today. What do you think? Easy? Amazing? <laughs> the, uh, the truth is you can all now start a side business selling data protection services. Uh, we do have a turnkey solution that uh, literally means that you could sign a contract uh, with Ripe, for example, or Ingram, and be selling this within a few minutes. Uh, you saw that you can host your own storage. We do have data centers around the world. We do have three in Asia, one in uh, Tokyo, one in Singapore, and one in Australia, uh, which is what enables us to give a complete turnkey solution for those of you who, who would want to. But now you can all supplement your income by selling backup. Uh, that's how easy we wanted to, to make it. So let me uh, talk about something new, and then we'll open up for Q&A, I believe. Uh, we are the first company, data protection and company, to invest in blockchain technology. How many of you here have heard of blockchain? Okay, most of you. Uh, the, way I, the way I describe blockchain is first it's a technology, it's not a product or a solution. And essentially what it does is similar to what DocuSign does for signatures, is it, it notarizes or time stamps uh, information that could be of any size, so it could be a video for example, 
and guarantees through a distributed model that that uh, information or video or data that you've timestamped has not been changed. So the scenario I like giving is that uh, today in uh, most of the world, police have shoulder cams, they have videos in their car, that they track everything they do so that if they have to go to court and prove they didn't do something or they did do something, they can prove it. Those videos though uh, can be tampered with. Blockchain enables you to essentially notarize the video such that if it does get altered, uh, everyone would know. They would, it would, uh, so, and you can be guaranteed that it hasn't been altered. Um, so what are we doing? So that's what uh, I described here. Blockchain is a distributed uh, ledger uh, and used for trust. Um, the thing about blockchain is it is just a uh, technology, which means that you have to take the technology and make it usable. Even for me, it took me a while to get my head around it and what we could do with it. And a while was unfortunately not hours or days, but weeks and months. Uh, so what we're doing now is we're focusing on investing, we've hired researchers within uh, Acronis R&D to start looking up how we can incorporate uh, blockchain, blockchain technology into our solutions. So two examples, uh, we have software-defined storage. We use it uh, for, our storage, uh, for our storage. It's optimized for the backup and recovery workload. We will incorporate blockchain. Uh, um, okay, got it. Uh, we will incorporate blockchain into our storage technology such that you can easily notarize or timestamp whatever is being stored uh, on those servers. Another one area we're looking at is uh, timestamping or notarizing logs. So we have uh, access and files cloud which are our uh, file sync and share product. Well, when you have files that you're syncing and sharing, you have logs that said who did what. Uh, there's demand for notarizing those logs so that if something happened, you have a way to prove who did what when uh, without a, a measure of doubt. Uh, so we're not announcing a product today. We're announcing that we're investing in this technology and very shortly you'll hear more about what we do, we'll do with it. Tomorrow we'll actually have a proof of concept for people to play with, and uh, we'll be uh, soliciting partners and customers to come and talk to us to make sure that the product we're developing actually meets their needs. So with that, uh, I'm going to stop, and I believe the next person is a partner, uh, Alvin Poe, who's the CEO and co-founder of Vitamin. Yeah. Correct?